I'm going to show you how you can quickly color your inked artwork. So in this particular case I've drawn this somewhat collection of weird creepy monsters and if I open up my Photoshop layers panel you can see that each of these monsters are on their own layers and it's just a more organized way for me to work. If I have to individually select objects I prefer to have everything on its own layer. I've not only put each of the inked objects on their own layer, I've also put them inside a group folder called inks. And one of the things that I recommend is that if you're coloring, you want to color on a layer that is below your inks layer. So I've made a new layer here, and I'm just going to call this colors. And what I'll do first of all is I'm going to use the magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool has the following settings that I'm using. I'm setting a tolerance of 40 and I'm selecting anti-alias, contiguous, and sample all layers. Now the tolerance value is an important consideration here because the higher the tolerance, the more coarse the selection is, which means that it's going to be a little bit more, uh, it'll try to select areas that, let me if I zoom in here real quick, you can see that I've got some you know, jaggedy edges here. If I set the tolerance value to say a one, and if I zoom in, you can see that all the gray areas here are not being selected. So I'm going to deselect that, and I'm going to bump the tolerance value up to, say, 50, and I'll deselect it again. And now you can see that it does a better job of capturing some of those mid-tone and light gray values uh, on the ink. So if you're trying to... Um, color or make selections using the magic wand tool, this is a way that you can ensure that you're not going to have any of these weird white you know, pixels where there's no color. So I've set this to a tolerance of 50. You can bump it up even higher depending upon what your threshold is. Let's just bump it up to 70 for giggles. Um, so I'm going to take the magic wand tool and I'm going to click on an area outside of my art. And you can see here uh, I'm going to make a few additional selections, holding down the shift key to make sure I capture all the area that is going to be my negative space. And I will make that, I'll fill that in with red. And before I deselect, what I want to do is I want to make a new layer. And I'm going to inverse the selection. It's shift command I. And this selects now the actual art itself. And I'm going to pick kind of a purplish value here. So you can see that uh, it's a quick way just to lay in some flat color values. Um, and the, the caveat or the thing that I would concern, uh, you know, kind of like mention here is that you want to make sure all of your inked line work is fully closed. If you have any gaps within your ink work, um, then the magic wand will actually go through those gaps and it will affect your selection. It's not a total deal breaker, but I generally try to apply that as a good rule of thumb. So uh, let's take a look now and apply this concept. We'll take this hand here, uh, and I'm on the layer that contains the purple. I'll select this top hand here, hold down my shift key to add to my selection. And if I zoom in real quick, how do I get some of these smaller selections? Well, I can use the magic wand tool, but that's just a lot of extra clicking. In instead of doing that, what I'm going to do is just go back to the freeform lasso tool, hold down my shift key, and I'm just going to add the parts that are not selected on the hand. I'm going to add those to my selection. So you can see here that I'm just making some very, very loose selections around here to make sure that I've got all my selections in place. So um, with that being said, I can hit Command J, Command U, and I can make this darker. I missed a little spot over here. So now it's isolating the hand from the other elements that are within the scene. I'll go back to this base layer. In fact, I'll label it as base color. Um, and I can use the hue saturation tool with whatever color I've put down as my base to dial in um, the specific value I want. So let me explain. If I hit 
if I'm now working on the guy with the hood um, and I want to color his hood separately from everything else I can hit command J which duplicates the selection onto its own layer command U and I can maybe make that hood kind of a desaturated darker version of blue and let's now go to his skin which is over here I'm going to make a coarse selection over here Command J, Command U, and let's give him um, a little brownish skin. I'll go back to the lips, and because I have all these small lines here, I'm going to just get by with using my lasso tool to make a selection for the lips. Command J, Command U. Go. And I'll now color the gums. And always going back to the base color layer, hitting Command J, and using the hue slider to dial in my values. And the advantage of this, this works 90% of the time. There might be some times where you have to actually go um, back to the swatches panel, but I try to avoid doing that. It just allows me to work quicker. So Command J, Command U. Let's make the teeth kind of yellowish. So now I've got our hoodied figure done. Let's repeat the same process now for the guy above him. I'm going to select his skin. And again, I've got his nose. I'm going to add to the selection by holding down the shift key and using the lasso tool. And I'll also get the inner part of his ear. Command J, Command U. Let's give him kind of a, a light peach hue. Let's go back to the base layer, use the magic wand tool, and select the hair. And here there's a really tiny sliver. If you look at the selection right here, it's really, really small. Sorry, I'm not sure. Okay, Alexa. Uh, and select that. Command J. And I'll give him a little bit of a brownish hair. Like so. And I'll color the eye, um, not the pupils, but the white part. Let's give him some bloodshot. And we'll give him some baby balloons. Right. So in this manner I can continue to quickly make selections, duplicate the selections onto their own layer, use the hue saturation, which is command U, to easily switch uh, the hue, saturation, and brightness. So um, I'll just do one more. We'll go to this alien guy here. So really mastering the selection tools I think can be very helpful in speeding up your workflow. So I'm using magic wand, command J, command U. And uh, I'll give him kind of a weird alien green. Maybe just drop the saturation down a little bit. And these are applying color flats. So this is a, a quick way to apply color flats um, when you are working with something that is already inked. So I'm going to stop the video right here. If you have any questions about my technique or if you have any questions about what I'm working on, feel, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, drop me a note in the comments. Um, I hope you found this video to be useful. There's plenty more where this came from. I'm excited to share more techniques that I've uh, been using for the last you know, half a dozen years or so, and uh, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. So until the next video, I hope you learned something, and we'll see you in the next one.